The Faraday effect is when an object, in today's case, a glass rod, when it's in a magnetic field, affects the polarization. So we have our vertical polarized light going in, uh, the analyzer polaroid over here in a screen where you can see what's going on. Here's a solenoid, which we'll use to create a magnetic field. Tucked inside the solenoid is a glass rod. I've got another one pulled out here so you can see what it lo looks like. It's just literally just a, a transparent rod inside a holder so it fits inside the solenoid. So that's already tucked inside the solenoid. First I'm going to cross the polarizers so we're, we're extinct. The, extinct. Beam is blocked, all right? Then I'm going to insert the, fair, the, the rod, the Faraday rod in here. So I can see light going through it, all right? And you can see very faintly, the, the spot has come back just a little bit, indicating the rod itself, even without the magnetic field, is slightly birefringent because I can't actually zero out that little bit of light there, no matter how crossed I get the polarizers, even when they're 100% crossed, a tiny bit of light leaks by. So the rod, the glass rod itself is, is, is probably very slightly birefringent, but that's independent of the effect we're looking at. We want to know what happens uh, now when I apply the magnetic field. So over here there's a power supply and basically I'm just going to turn it on and we can see we're now running about 3.1 amperes through the coil. So there's a magnetic field in there. You can see our, our spot has got a little bit brighter now. And I can try zeroing it out again. And I find I have to move just a little bit. The rotation is very tiny. All right, so when I find the minimum now, I find I've rotated it about two degrees counterclockwise. Two degrees counterclockwise. Now I'm going to turn the magnetic field off and re-zero. Right. And then I'm going to reverse the magnetic field just by reversing the leads on the power supply over here and turn it back on again. 3.1 amperes. The beam is now a little brighter. And now I see I have to rotate now about 2 degrees clockwise now. So the direction of rotation has changed when I reverse the magnetic field for the, for the solenoid. And this is, this is what we call the DC Faraday effect because we're applying a constant magnetic field and so you just get a, a rotation proportional to the size of the B field. Uh, using a setup though, it's really difficult to measure how big that is because at the maximum output of our power supply we just get a barely detectable rotation. Faraday effect part two. I've got the same setup I had before, except I replaced our screen that we were looking at the spot with, with our electronic detector, actually a different electronic detector, and hooked that, the output of that detector into an oscilloscope. I've also, instead of driving the, the solenoid with a DC field, I'm now driving it with an alternating uh, magnetic field. That's the upper trace on the screen. We can see I'm driving it at about 90 hertz, and uh, the, right now the amplitude is set to zero. The ammeter up above here shows the amplitude of the current, so I can vary that. And you see when I turn up the uh, magnetic field, our, uh, our detector detects something. Right now the, uh, the polarizers should be 100% uh, cross, so our, our, our channel 2, our signal, should be at zero volts. Let me uh, adjust the, the, uh, the second polarizer to get them 100% crossed. And you see, I'm, I'm not quite at full extinction. There's definitely a minimum right there. So now I can get them right there. So now they're completely crossed. And our channel 2 signal has a little bit of noise in it. There's lots of, uh, well, basically we, our detector is, is sitting out in room light. So there might be a little bit of of signal coming in from the room lights. Uh, I can close the door and see if that goes away. And that helps a little bit, but now I can't see any of the crawl. So I'm going to leave, actually leave a little bit of room light in there. And there's still a lot of uh, this high frequency garbage in there, which uh, here's, a, here's a stupid oscilloscope trick for you. You can actually average a lot of that stuff out. If you go to the uh, acquire button up here, uh, this menu hop, pops up, 
uh, you usually use, use the oscilloscope in, in sample mode, but you can just as easily set it to average some number of traces. And when I do that, you see most of the noise disappears. Currently it's averaging 16 scans, 16 traces across the screen right there, and most of that high frequency garbage has now disappeared. All right, so now when I turn up the, uh, the magnetic field, we can see some signal appearing here. All right. And it looks, it's not quite symmetric. Let me, uh, again, go back and readjust the polarizer a little bit. I'm just going to untwist the second polarizer a little bit. You can see as I do that, right, I get this signal. Now I'm letting a little more light in, but the signal gets, gets, gets much bigger because I'm letting more light in as I uncross the polarizer. And then when I get them completely crossed, I'm here, and then if I go the other way, Again, I'm letting more light in, and this, but the signal frequency changes. So we want to be right where the polarizers are, as crossed as we can get them. Note the frequency is twice the frequency of, our, of the output, is twice the frequency of our changing magnetic field. Think about why that might be. What's, what's going on there? What is, what is going on with the, the shape of this waveform? Now we're ready to actually take some data. I'm going to put a measurement on the screen here. We can measure the amplitude of the output, channel 2, the peak, and this notice this is, this is uh, marking, measuring the, the peak to peak amplitude. You can convert that to amplitude or RMS or whatever you want, but this is peak to peak that the scope is displaying right now. And uh, as I go back down to zero, current, it sure enough drops to pretty close to zero. Alright, so now we can take some data. I can set this, increase this up to to some current. There's half an amp here, and you can read an amplitude. Three quarters of an amp here. Less sensitive scale to go up to higher currents. All right, the distortion you're seeing right now is because our amplifier is starting to give out on us at high currents. So if the output doesn't look like a sine wave anymore, it's because the amplifier circuitry is heating up and distorting the signal right there. You see, I didn't change anything, but the amplifier is not happy driving that large current. So as long as you, the signal looks sinusoidal, you can actually record the data. When it's not sinusoidal looking like that, you don't want to record that. All right, so we seem to be limited to about an amp and a half before the amplifier gives out on us. So I'll take some more data uh, with decreasing amplitudes now. Changing scales again. All right, and that should be everything you need for the Faraday effect.